Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today I'm talking about week 17 of 2019. Um, all of the shows for WWE this week. That's what I'm going to talk about in this episode. Uh, because I put it off, I didn't record any episodes while I was out on the road going to a couple of these shows. Um, <clears throat> mostly because there were, uh, the hotels I were at did not have very thick walls and had lots of noise, uh, from adjacent rooms, um, which wasn't a problem for me as far as sleeping and stuff, which is fine. Um, cause I, I put on like a podcast, uh, a bunch of podcasts when I go to sleep anyway. Um, but for recording purposes, you don't want to hear, um, you know, kids fighting with each other or whatever in the next room um at all hours no matter when i did that when i recorded that would have been the case probably or i would have been talking and then disturbing other people sleeping and i didn't want to do that either anyway enough explaining why i put off this episode but uh and let's get into the episode itself it's gonna be a long 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 one because i went to des moines iowa for raw episode 1352 the next night i was in lincoln nebraska um to see smackdown episode 1027 and 205 live episode 126 um and honestly i didn't take notes or anything about any of this stuff so i'm just gonna tell you what i remembered kind of and i'll probably forget about a lot of really important things but uh, i mostly want to talk about the trip itself um some of the stuff that you don't see on tv um because <clears throat> there was some stuff that went down uh to talk about um, and also, uh, some other stuff that I did while I was in Nebraska. Um, I was only in Iowa for the one day and I didn't do anything Iowa like, um, it was just raw and then back to the hotel and that was it. Um, but I did do some stuff in Nebraska because, uh, the next night on Wednesday I went to see, um, <clears throat> uh, this isn't a Nebraska thing, but it happened in Nebraska. Uh, Cirque du Soleil Crystal, which is really, really cool. It is their ice show, and um, I recommend seeing it if it's in a town near you coming up. Um, I believe it's uh, – no, I can't remember any of the other towns that it's coming up in. But um, this is the closest it's going to be to Denver, and it happened to be in town for the month that I was going to be out there. So that was really nice. Um and then I also went to the Omaha Zoo. I know that's not the actual name of the zoo. It's the Oma it was Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo or something like that. I don't I don't know. I should I should make an effort to actually remember <laughs> the full name of the zoo cuz it is pretty pretty good. Um but we'll, I'll get, I'll get to that in just a minute. Uh on Thursday night, I went to NXT Live Omaha. And that was a crazy, crazy show. Um, I will, I will get to that eventually. And then uh, the shows that I watched on TV were NXT UK episode forty um, and NXT episode five hundred and three. Uh, a lot of matches between those. There's seven matches total um, to talk about. But uh, I'm just gonna say what the matches were. And if I happen to remember anything specific about it. So uh, this trip is mainly going to be a road trip story time episode. Um, I left early on Monday morning. Um, I had intended, originally intended on leaving, what was it, uh, Sunday night. I was trying to remember what day comes before Monday. Uh, late Sunday night and then like be able to take my time or whatever. And, like, take a break in the middle to nap. Um, but because I had worked overnight on Saturday, I said, I, I just need some sleep. And I'll I'll wake up at, like, 3 a.m. or something. I ended up waking up, <laughs> up at 4.30 or something like that. And I left at 5. Um, and that actually ended up working kind of perfectly. Um, although I probably should have... <laughs> I probably should have, uh, what is it? The, what is the word I'm thinking of? Um, followed the speed limit, adhered to the speed limit, um, more closely 
and then I would have gotten there like maybe like an hour later probably. But it's about let's see how how far was it? Um, I got there in nine hours and I averaged like exactly seventy five miles per hour, which would be one hundred fifty times four, six hundred. 70 it's about 670 miles something like that and um <clears throat> this was uh with getting i i got to the hotel i went to the hotel first and there was like another mile or two to get to the to the arena but um yeah how did i do that how did i pull that off i only stopped for fuel twice um and that was all that that was kind of interesting because i i started on a no, I got fuel the day before, so that was fine. Uh, so I, I didn't have to get fuel again until like 250 miles into the trip or whatever. Um, but yeah, when I, when I stopped for fuel, it was stop, use the restroom, fuel up, back on the road. Because uh, I had a, full, uh, a cooler full of food. Um, I had plenty of water in all my water bottles. I didn't need to stop and buy any food or meals on the way out there. Um, of course, bought some actual food once i got into des moines but um yeah i was just it was literally pedal to the metal at some points um i had my cruise control set to 70 no not to 75 already lying i had it set to like 81 the entire time and then i would gun it to get, to pass uh, like trucks and stuff um so there were a couple of times where i just thought you know what what the heck i'm gonna see how fast i can go before I feel like it's, I probably shouldn't go this fast. And, um, I did not max out my car's limitations, but I did max out, uh, how willing I was to, to push those limits. Um, so anyway, uh, that's how I got there in so fast, so fast of time. And it helped being well rested. Um, I could not repeat that performance on the way back because I was doing, did, did so much stuff. Uh, my last day there, it, I did way too much stuff, and then I didn't stay in a hotel that night. So, um, <clears throat> raw was great; it was fine. Whatever. I it, I don't even remember what happens on raw. Honestly, I think um, <clears throat> that was my cough. Think. What did happen on Raw? I don't know. The Iconics were on there. Um, Becky, Lynch at, Becky Lynch had a match with Alicia Fox. That was uh, not great. Um, the main event, we had... Oh, what was the... There was a dark match. I think it was Seth Rollins and AJ Styles versus... Was that even what it was? I'm I'm totally lying. I don't even, I don't remember anything. I barely remember it. Oh, there were two triple threat matches. That's right. Okay, there were two triple threat matches, and the main event was the winners of those two matches again. So it was, it, there was not a tag team match with Seth and AJ teaming up. Um, it was a tag team match: Seth and Braun versus Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Um, which I think was ended in disqualification or something. I, I don't even remember how that ended or whatever, but that was the, that was the dark match. And that continues to prove my uh, theory. Um, and this is a pr absolutely provable theory. If I did enough research um, that if the main event of raw contains, <laughs> it consists of Seth Rollins. If Seth Rollins is in the main event of the televised show, then there will not be uh, a match afterwards. Um, there'll just be a continuation of wherever that, that main event was. If Seth Rollins is not in the main event of the televised show, then he will be in a dark main event afterwards or some type of dark segment to end the night. And that has happened every single Raw that I've been to in the last year and a half, every single time raw has ended with seth rollins involved in some way um so i, I think that's kind of, that's pretty cool for him um 
But uh, there were the two triple threat matches. We and one of them it was AJ Styles, Samojo, and Rey Mysterio, I think. And then the other one was the Miz, Drew McIntyre, and the winner of that match, uh, Baron Corbin. Um, so AJ Styles won his match. Baron Corbin won his match. And uh, the finish, oh my gosh, yes, I remember this. The finish of the the triple threat with AJ Styles winning was friggin' awesome. We had a, a Styles clash. He Styles clashed Ryan, uh, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Mystery, uh, Rey Mysterio into Samoa Joe, and then uh, got the pin. Uh, oh, that was so cool. That was so freaking awesome. Like, that whole match was great. Um, the other one, Baron Corbin won because he stole the pin from Drew McIntyre, I believe. Um, and I just thought that was hilarious. I just started laughing. Like, this is <laughs> this is ridiculous. And if Baron Corbin... What they're fighting for is to challenge Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank for the Universal Championship. And uh, when Baron Corbin won that match... It's like, oh my god, if they actually if he actually wins against AJ Styles tonight, that's just the funniest thing. And I'm okay with it because it's so ridiculous. Um luckily, AJ Styles won and he will go on to fight Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank for the Universal Championship. That's going to be an awesome awesome match. And I'm I'm super bummed that I'm not gonna go see, gonna be able to be there in person. Um, I should be able to watch it live. Um, I'll be in California for the um, uh, Comic Con Revolution in Ontario, California, and I, it, depending on the hours of the of the event, I may be able to watch it. Uh, cause usually on Sundays, the, the stuff ends at like five or six instead of, but being in the West coast, I think the pre-show starts at like 3 AM, 3, 3 PM. I mean, oh my God, if the pre-show started at 3 AM to get stuff started for a pay-per-view day, my God, that's a, that's a long, long day. Um, so yeah, that's the stuff that I remember from, from there, but it was, uh, I had pretty good seats. Um, I enjoyed the seat that I had because I was front row of the upper level. And um, I always like being in the front row of uh, an elevated section, whether it's of the lower bowl, bowl where it's the start of the risers. Front row there is always good. Um, almost always good. Sometimes you have like a huge barrier like the, the the wall is really tall or like an evolution where they didn't have a chair for me what was that about it was just a it was just a patch of concrete an empty gap and they had to bring over like a folding chair for me to use and it was like six inches lower than the regular ch seats and uh, that, that was kind of lame but anyway, maybe I could have com complained and get me like, hey, are there any open floor seats? Maybe I can just go over there. Um, they, they probably wouldn't have gone for that. But um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the, the, the upper level, pretty good, pretty good seats. But the um, of course, they have the lights to illuminate the crowd, show off how many people are there. And it's just shine in your face all the time. Um, it's a problem at every show. Everybody's always complaining about all of it. And personally, I'm like, I mean, I know I just, I, I pretty much just complained about it, but I don't come, I'm not really com, uh, complaining about, complaintative, complainative. What's the adjective of complaining? Full of complaint. Hmm. Complainful? Um, that, I don't know if that word's ever been uttered by a human being before. Um, so yeah, raw, raw was fun. Raw is fun. And I had driven for nine hours up until then, uh, getting there. And that was fine. 
Uh, the great thing about Midwest shows, like my favorite thing I think about Midwest shows, is how friggin' cheap parking is. Like, dang, my most expensive parking that I had the whole week was for Cirque du Soleil is $8. I was like, oh, what the hell? $8? Why are you doing? Because the other two shows uh, uh, before that, Raw and SmackDown, it was only $5 each, um, which is like there you can't even complain about that i i don't think i i could probably i could find a way to complain about that like it should just be free but um here's another thing about uh i think it's omaha yeah uh a billboard in omaha i saw it said um because uh the morning of smackdown I went to see what did I do I went to see uh, I had time to kill because I was in Des Moines Iowa I had to check out 11 but I couldn't check in until four o'clock and then the show is at sorry like 6 30 over in Lincoln so I, st- I stopped in Omaha uh, so I could check into the hotel but before that I went to see a movie I saw Mary Magdalene starring um Rooney Mara and Joaquin Phoenix and I thought that movie was really good it's one of the best like biblical movies that I've seen other than Noah Noah is freaking awesome starring Russell Crowe go watch that movie it's great it's not it's like if you're it's awesome it's awesome I love it um so Mary Magdalene it's like my second favorite behind Noah but uh on my way to the theater I see a billboard this is in Omaha and it says uh, your t- uh, your town or what your city whatever is losing loses twenty million dollars a year. is it twenty million twenty million dollars a year annually are you part of the problem it it asks that's what that's ju- what the billboard said and I don't know what that what kind of angle that is what they're taking there like just accusing everybody like you're 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 the problem over here it's not you know the government that's running the city it's not their fault it's everybody's fault like it, it but with but not being very sp- specific about it at all they're just being very accusatory and uh very non-specific so it just w- would make everybody feel bad or make everybody not care at all they're like you know give me some specifics what is where where is that 20 million dollar difference coming from give me some information there there may have been a website or something on there but uh i i didn't notice it all i noticed was the uh, accusatory statement and i don't even live there I, i i would say that if anything i was helping by coming to visit and spending money on stuff while i was there and so I am absolutely not part of the problem um, <clears throat> unless my driving is uh, causing more wear than uh, the sales taxes and stuff on stuff that I buy while there. I don't know. Is that, that's where some of the sales tax goes, right? It's for It goes to like the roads and stuff so that people can get to the stores where you buy the stuff. I don't know it's different everywhere um so what was i saying uh so this yes this was on uh tuesday and um yeah tuesday tuesday was interesting it was interesting uh i went to the draft house there are two alamo draft houses in omaha which is very interesting to me i wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect them to have two uh, because Denver only has two and Denver has a lot more people than Omaha, Nebraska. I think I'm pretty sure of that. Um, Don't quote me on it, but I'm pretty sure that that is a true thing. And um, I think there's more people in the Denver metro area than all of Nebraska, like the entire state. Um, I could look that up. In fact, I will look that up. I'll be back in just one moment. Okay, um, the entire population of Nebraska 
It was like one uh, 1.95 million people. Uh, the population of the Denver metro area. Um, I am fudging what I said a little bit. What I intended by that is the Denver area. And I mean the city of Denver itself. Because the city of Denver itself only has like 700,000 people or something like that. Uh, but the Denver metro population is 2.88 or 2.89 if we're rounding up million people so there you go there you have it uh and and the denver metro area let's see um just so you know what that consists of for that number is um is denver um the suburbs around it and It's the it's these uh, counties: uh, Adams, Arapahoe, Boulder, Broomfield, Denver, Douglas, Jefferson. Uh, so it does include Denver, or it does include Boulder. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I brought I brought some I I brought a little bit of the Denver money over to to Omaha. I guess I'm helping with that twenty million deficit. Deficit. Um, that's a that's a lot. It's a lot they're losing per year. Like, and it, you don't, it doesn't seem like they're spending money on stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, the one draft house that I went to see Mary Magdalene, it was, um, it was pretty, pretty nice. It was like in a shopping center type of thing, like a downtown sort of shopping area. And that I believe was like the nicest building on the, on the block, at least between there and the highway. Anyway, I, I'm talking enough crap about a lot. I did like that theater. There are only three screens, and th but there's four floors inside of the draft house, and it's the third floor that you can get to the, to the three theaters on. But the fourth floor, you can only get to the first theater, uh, which was confusing because it went all the way up because the signs just keep saying, like, they point to the left. They're like, screens to the left. But every floor says that. And what it means, it means a different thing for each floor, like why it's pointing to. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, they have this giant iron giant. They have this giant iron giant sta statue. They have an iron giant statue that's like 20 feet tall um, because it, it, they have like three floors of open airspace. And uh, that's really cool. I think that's the coolest thing about this theater, at least that I saw. There might be other really cool stuff that they have that I did not see. Um, so uh, uh, the Lincoln show, uh, SmackDown. Um, some may have heard about uh, some, some crazy stuff happening in the audience. And um, I don't want to get into details of it. Um, I did not hear any reports afterward or anything like that, but there was an incident with a man in the audience. He was like in the second row and they ended up, it ended up on the floor, like, uh, just off to the side. And, um, so if you're looking from the view on TV during the opening segment, you could see like some of the, the medics and stuff on screen, right? So they're right there on the floor. And then, um, that first floor, that first row of the corner section, floor section, um, they asked them to get up. And so they're um, just standing behind uh, the, the TV floor section. I'm just making up phrases for stuff now. Um, while they were all dealing with this, uh, all the me medical staff and everything. Um, so, yeah, they were like doing chest compressions, all that kind of stuff. And. I only actually looked over like once or twice um, because it was is real. It was a really uncomfortable situation um, to just ha just for that to be happening within the field of view of your and it, you're at the same time you're this live event is going on and I can't even imagine what it was like for the people who were, who were sitting right next to it that w must have been bonkers um because it was like 20 feet away from me and um i i just didn't want to actually look and see what's going on and uh didn't i could see like some people were like taking pictures and stuff 
like don't don't do that that's messed up to do to do that even if you're just like doing it to show to, to tell your friends like just one person like this is crazy that this is going on like you don't have to take a picture of it, just like tell them like, which is what i did i took a couple of people while i told them this is crazy that this is happening and i really hope that they're okay and you know they they took them away on a stretcher um and then but you know stuff gets it just snowballs out of control like people are saying that he died and stuff like that when nobody there was no indication of that from anything that i saw and nothing no like tweets or anything with like actual um valid like uh, like a valid source of on that type of thing happening um or if even if it was a heart attack in the first place or something or anything like that it was all it's all conjecture all of it uh because from what i saw i, I thought that i saw him like moving around and and stuff like that as they were taking him out but i could be mistaken as well um that might have just been the the like incidental movement of them like lifting him up on the thing whatever and then there are other tweets saying oh there were two stretchers that were rolled out technically yes that's true but the second stretcher is was the one that has like all their equipment and stuff on it um there wasn't a second person that was getting medical attention or anything like that it was the, the guy was on the first stretcher it was taken out and then the stretcher with all their equipment on it was rolled out. So, um, so it, I'm, I, I'm not trying to uh, provide the scoop on the most accurate information. Um, I just want to pro provide insight on some of the stuff, like how people can just g roll with information with like very limited uh, limited information and make assumptions and then blow it out of proportion and uh it's it's suddenly like it's crazy how um how exaggerated stuff can get like so so quickly based on such little information and that's kind of that just happens with everything not just with with something like this but with like backstage rumors if somebody says like oh it's cold in here like backstage and then suddenly uh, they have <laughs> uh accidental pun they have backstage heat about there not being heat or something like that and um i i don't know it it is and then you see some of the some of the comments like oh they should have stopped the show and uh gotten it taken care of and been respectful towards them or i don't even know if they use those words but it's like the best thing to do is what they what they did the best way they could do it is how they were doing it because it was the whole um oh my god i wonder was the guy i sat next to was that the same guy oh i feel bad now because i didn't really talk to the guys i sat next to other than like he said oh that's awful because they were playing when it first started happening they were playing the like the um uh, jimmy fallon like uh lip sync karaoke thing and uh and i was i wasn't paying attention i was just looking down at my phone i didn't know what was going on and the guy is says, oh the guy next to me says oh that's terrible and uh no <laughs> it's not the it's not the same guy i sat next to you at, at nxt because he's he was telling me where he was saying it was in a whole different place but he did sit ne next to a guy who i saw i was in that row that had to move um well i'll get to that as well i know this is a crazy long episode about not a lot of actual wrestling but um yeah he says oh that's terrible and i look up to him because i assume he's talking about the lip sync video and like kind of laughing and like oh yeah and he says oh, that guy like is getting cpr over there like oh crap i feel really bad for as like turning to you with a smile uh because i was not aware of that that was what was happening so um yeah it, it made the that it's part of why i don't really remember 
very much of what happened on SmackDown. Um, because that was like the whole first thing was with, with Shane and um, the other people, Roman Reigns, Elias. They were it, that all that stuff. I don't really remember at all. Um, but uh, I don't know what happened. What what uh, happened? Um, what the what the um, recovery was? I saw a tweet that said that the security guard said that they. Um, that the guys got they got him breathing again all that kind of thing but again that was just a tweet that somebody had information that the security guard may have had bad information also and who even knows i just hope that the guy is okay now and if not that is um a really really awful um and and you know it stuff like that can happen at any time anywhere and um i mean if it's kind of a good place for that to for that kind of thing to happen as far as getting medical attention quickly because there are like emts and stuff there in case anything happens um not just for the wrestlers they're also there for if anything happens in the audience and stuff like that so um it, you're they're just like a walk away as opposed to being uh you know back over at the fire station or at the hospital or whatever um oh yeah that's enough talking about that um i i hope that guy is okay and if not then um you know i my i i feel i feel for all the people who know him and all that because that's um a bummer i mean it's a bummer it's a bummer that it happened to begin with in um uh what whether wh- whatever happens afterwards it it sucks for to be that person i was oh my god uh let's let's talk about something else i was uh, i feel like i'm sounding worse and worse and worse about it um let's see we had the new uh oh is Kofi Kingston versus who was it? It's his first singles match. Kofi Kingston versus is it Randy Orton? No. Randy Orton was in the dark match. Um, the dark match was uh, Roman Reigns and oh, I don't even, it was Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton. That's right. It was a singles match. Um, it uh, the main event: Kofi Kingston versus. Oh my God, who is he fighting against? It was um, Shinsuke Nakamura. That's right. Um, he had all of his friends at his side. Shinsuke had his friends at his side. And uh, Kofi Kingston won the match. And uh, there's all kinds of stuff with them involved. I, I was watching Rusev and Lana during a lot of the match because uh, they were being very, very funny. Um, but, you know, they were being serious, but funny, funny in a serious way. Is yelling at the crowd to shut up and stuff like that. And uh, he was wearing a really nice suit. I thought that was pretty cool. Rusev looking especially ravishing. Um, no, that's not... It, it, what is his descriptor? But anyway, uh, Kevin Owens, Bago, uh, he just joined the New Day last week. And he uh, relieved himself of his New Day duties this week by super kicking Kofi right in the face and then power bombing Xavier into the into the apron and all that kind of stuff. So I think I think we're headed towards Kevin Owens versus Kofi Kingston at Money in the Bank for the WWE championship. Um so I I think that's that's pretty cool. It, it was kind of surprising that it happened so quickly. Um it was like a two-week thing, 
not even two weeks if you count uh it like it was it was just over one week between when he joined and when he exited the new new day and um yeah it was uh, I, i'm looking forward to what, whatever happens so now we have kevin owens and Sami Zayn. they're the the top bad guys on both shows and um i think that's pretty cool that's pretty cool we also had andrade um make his return to smackdown is briefly <laughs> had his one week stint on raw um but he got a rematch against finn balor uh which he did not win but uh i could i i want to see these two fight as much as possible um because he did win over on raw it was a non-title match then it's a, it was still a non-title match but i think next time title match andrade wins I think. Uh, Alistair Black, I don't think he had an actual match, but he also is made the flip-flop back. Um, but he's been appearing on both shows anyway, so it's like once he's finally only on one show each week, which I, I think technically that's what happened this week. Um, but he wasn't in the in ring. He just had like a, a performance, uh, not a performance thing, a promo, a video promo. Um, what else happened on this episode? We had uh, Billy Kay and Peyton. No, we had Peyton Royce versus Kyrie Sane. And Kyrie Sane won. And uh, a, an incredible backstage interview with her explaining how, well, before the match, she was saying that last time she was very dehydrated. And so now she drank a whole gallon of water. And Billy turns to her and is like, really, a whole gallon? Seems like a lot. I uh, apologize for that accent. And uh, there's a great back, backstage video of her saying, like, I, I drank too much, and then she hurt my rib. I have a broken rib, and uh, I have to go use the bathroom and all that kind of stuff. It's great. Just go watch that video. It's awesome. Um, let's see. Becky uh, got people all riled up again. Uh, Bailey versus Charlotte to determine which one of them will fight for the SmackDown Championship, who will fight uh, Becky for the SmackDown Championship at Money in the Bank. And Charlotte won that match. So Becky will be pulling double duty. She'll have a match against Lacey Evans and a match against Charlotte, and then probably also a match against whoever wins the Money in the Bank contract. So I think that could be pretty cool that she would be the first one I think she'd be the first one to compete in two matches uh, to defend her championship, a championship in two matches on the same night. Um, and then potentially in th the first one to do it in three matches on the same night. Uh, the first woman to do it. Cause I think uh, men have done, de men have definitely done defending it twice. Um, I don't know if it's, happened that they've defended it three times in one in one night before but uh that would be really cool that would be really cool i'm looking forward to that um over on 205 live um man i forget what the first match was but the main event was oni lorkin versus Arya davari and the winner of the match will uh go on to fight uh tony nice for the cruiserweight championship and uh, Arya Davari won that match. So we're going to get Davari versus Nice. And that should be pretty, pretty cool. I don't know if that if that's going to be at Money in the Bank or if it's just going to be on a regular episode. But I'm looking forward to it either way. Um, and then the, the, the main event, the dark main event, was uh, Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton. Uh, it, was, it was pretty fun. They were doing uh, a little bit of a pose off to see who gets the more more cheers for uh, than the other and um it was somebody attacked was it i forget who attacked um it might have been joe 
or something. The match ended in disqualification. And uh, we ended up with um, Finn coming out to... Oh, Elias. Duh, of course. Elias interfered. And then uh, Finn comes out and he helps fight uh, both of them off. And then we end with uh, Roman and Finn. Buddies. Good old... These best... These new best buds on SmackDown. And uh, yeah, it it was a pretty nice way to end the night. Um so uh on my way back is the next long-winded not wrestling story um like the last 10 miles like 10 miles away from getting back to my hotel um in omaha uh it's about an hour drive between lincoln and omaha uh my i hear this weird sound it sounds like the the wind is is suddenly 10 times louder and more high pitched like what is what is going on is it the the pavement that i'm driving on is it weird or is it like is it just get like really really windy i don't know what's happening um i was tempted to to stop and i'm kind of, half of me is glad that i didn't half of me is, is thinks that i probably should have but if i had stopped to try to deal with the problem that it ended up being i think it would have been um i would have it would have been a worse time than what ended up happening instead the next day uh so basically part of my car had come undone like the bottom body piece like the wheel well that then connects to the bottom and like covers like going up into like the the headlight and stuff or the fog light that's on the bumper um that had come undone and had been dragging on the ground in front of uh my front wheel and part of it was like actually rubbing and getting like pulled under the wheel and it was just like absolutely shredded and that's what was making the noise i and luckily it didn't like destroy my tire or anything like that uh, but my intention was on Wednesday to spend that whole day at the Omaha Zoo um, because I, I I didn't have to drive anywhere that day. Um, I just had to go to the, to the Cirque du Soleil that evening, which was like two miles away. So I was going to be able to, to go to the zoo and have a really good time. But one, I was very tired from all the driving the day before anyway um this is like four hours total of driving not that big of a deal but um and also the the, those last 10 minutes of the drive was kind of freaked me out and it it didn't really freak me out it's just like what the heck's going on um so i uh i i deal with the problem i spend a, a a couple hours dealing with that problem getting it fixed not like taking into a shop or something but like figuring out how am i going to fix this uh to to work to go uh get around town for the rest of the stuff here but also the 600 miles to get back home um it needs to not be dragging along the ground uh this big piece of plastic um so i figured out that uh well there's everything was far away i thought if there's duct tape at the gas station that's next to the hotel then i'll just use that and that's perfect they didn't have duct tape at all they didn't have any kind of tape or anything like that which is like why it can duct tape is the most convenient thing you would think that a convenience store would have the most convenient thing that you could buy at any store duct tape come on uh, so I, I had walked over there cause I didn't want to drive my car anywhere if I didn't have to. And, um, that, uh, that didn't work out. And so I looked up, uh, the closest Walmart was like five miles away. I'm like, that's, a, that's a long way to go with this problem happening. Uh, the nearest auto parts store is like a mile away. And even then I was like, ah, without it being secured out of the way, not dragging on the ground i'm not going to do that um and that's when i realized oh it's this whole piece it's not just because i thought it was just the wheel well part 
that was just like bending in and I wanted the tape to like hold it towards the front. I, but uh, when I realized it was the whole thing that was hanging down, I thought, oh, okay, if I can find something that I can just like tie this up, because I, I was thinking I could just get zip ties. Zip ties. Um, but they, they don't sell those at the, the convenience store either, of course. Um, why would they? If they didn't have duct tape, why would they have zip ties? But um, uh, luckily, the parking lot of the hotel is kind of messy. Uh, off on the edge you'd see like bits and pieces of car parts and things like <laughs> there were like mufflers on the ground or anything like that but uh you know like little bits and pieces that like fall off when people are like doing stuff or whatever um i found like two pieces of wire like you know uh, just you know regular copper wire that i would use to 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 wire up your lights or whatever and uh so i grabbed those and um i tied uh in two spots um all these pieces together into where there should be like bolts and that's part of the problem that causes to begin with is that there there's some missing bolts and things um so these two pieces of wire it's holding it just enough to uh that i can get over to the auto parts store buy some zip ties and some duct tape now this duct tape is apparently is no residue duct tape which uh isn't entirely necessary because i didn't um attach the duct tape to any of the external parts of the car the like painted parts of the car so that's not gonna be an issue anyway but um yeah i went and got those and uh then went back to the hotel this is gonna be easier to do all the work in the hotel parking lot instead of the, the auto parts parking lot. Uh, they don't like it when you do that anyway, if you, if you can help it. Um, <clears throat> at least most auto parts stores are like that, I think. But um, it's like this, this is a store. It's not, it's not your garage. Um, I've never been yelled at for doing that or anything, but I've never actually done that. I mean, I've changed my windshield wiper blades, but that's like totally different than like changing your oil or like changing out the water pump like that kind of stuff anyway um i i got the zip ties going got a couple i uh, did a couple of those um i had made a uh, a hole i actually didn't end up using that hole i just used duct tape um and just did like a couple layers of it doing like a cross pattern and stuff like that to get this this plastic piece attached um and secure in this in roughly the shape that it's supposed to be in uh like there's like some big gaps where it just been grinded away and i just like recreated those most of those parts with the duct tape and um it it worked it held together for the two miles to the Cirque du Soleil show to two miles back and then uh, the couple of miles to get over to the to to the NXT the next night, and then the ultimate test. Well, actually, there 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 is the 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 test of driving 600 miles frequently at 80 miles per hour or greater. No problem at all. It all held perfectly fine, which is awesome. I was really happy about that. And then I uh, I went and got a car wash. And uh, it seemed to be just fine after that as well. So um, I don't have a whole lot of time in town in the next like month, really, a uh, month and a half that I could spend a whole lot of time taking my car in to get it like actually fixed, um, that whole piece like replaced. Um, so if it's going to work for right now, I'm just going to leave it as it is until I can get to it. Um, so there you go. I'm going to leave that duct tape and those zip ties. I got like a whole thing of zip ties because here's the thing. I mean, the, the pricing for this is similar to how they price a lot of things is that, you know, the smallest pack, like the most convenient pack is has the highest margin. Um, so like there's a pack of like 20 zip ties. that's like six dollars, something like that. And then there's a pack of 50 zip ties. It was eight dollars. And there's a pack of 100 zip ties, and that was $15. But then there was a pack 
of 200 zip ties and it was $18 or something like that. Like, I'm going to get that one because this is, I can use the, I, I, I never have to buy more zip ties unless I don't have these zip ties with me when I need them. And then I buy more again because I have a ton of zip ties here at home, but I do not have any of them with me. And I have a lot of duct tape and other types of tape here at home. I did not have any of that with me. Um, so now that, that duct tape and that those zip ties, those are my on the road. Those are stay in my car um, because those are two of the most useful things for makeshift repairs. Not for like engine stuff. Well, duct tape maybe for some engines. No, not not that type of duct tape. It's it specifically says don't put it on like your 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 exhaust and stuff like that um, because it'll probably catch fire. Uh, use whatever they use to make it n not has have residue. It probably catches fire at like three hundred degrees. Um, how hot does uh, exhaust gets really really hot? Um, I I would imagine it's way more than three hundred degrees, but uh. What was I saying? Yeah, that worked out fine. I went over to the uh, Cirque du Soleil's Crystal Show. Like I said, it was awesome. Uh, there's the ice skating. There's uh, like a lot of figure. There's the figure skating, but there's also some extreme ice skaters doing like flips and tricks and stuff off of ramps. That's really cool. Um, they have the clown throughout the, tr the show uh, who's doing all kinds of silly stuff, but he skates and everything as well. And before the show he's doing like all kinds of snowball stuff, which was really fun. Um, but the, the story of the show is that the, uh, this girl crystal, uh, she's having a hard time in school and stuff like that. She's kind of an outcast and she falls into a lake and it's like, she sees her like reflection and it gets her evil twin or something. I don't know. And she's like in this under underwater alt other world and uh, she sees all this weird stuff. And so like her double and then later on, it's like her triple and her quadruple. There's like three of her evil selves doing all this stuff. Um, and then there's a, a lot of like trapeze stuff is really cool. And I don't know what the lesson that she learned from the whole experience was or anything like that. I I don't know. I guess like I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know what the the lesson she learned is. Like how how her life got better from this experience. I guess like appreciate what you have better because you could fall through it through ice and die or whatever. Um. So, but yeah, it was a, it was a really cool show, and um. I enjoyed it. It was uh, there a few empty seats um there which was which was good because it meant uh that uh, people could spread out a little bit more and i didn't have to sit tightly right between two people um uh, which will come into play on my thursday stories um which i'll get to in just a minute for nxt first gotta talk about the zoo um like i said i was originally gonna go to the zoo on wednesday but i had to do all that car stuff I went on Thursday instead after checking out my hotel and um, it was very, very cold and rainy that morning. I th and I was almost about to say, uh, I shouldn't, I, I'm not going to go to the zoo because it's cold and all of that. And it's just wet. And I want to take really good pictures. And I can't, the wet isn't really good for my camera, but I, I went anyway and it turned out to be a very good decision because like an hour, two hours later, it was the sun was coming out. It's actually kind of hot. And um, I unfortunately didn't have sunblock, but I did. Uh, I have a long sleeve shirt and I tried to be inside as much as I could and all that. So it ended up being just fine. And I saw almost everything. I think I went to all of the areas of the zoo I got there at um, like 10 o'clock, I think, and I left at like right before they closed or stopped letting people in at about five o'clock. Uh, so that was a solid, that was a long, long day at the zoo. That's something like seven hours. 
Um, and I think I saw everything. I didn't go to Lemur Island because um, I missed it on my first pass. And then uh, by the time I saw everything else, it was like kind of the f one of the furthest points to get to to go back over there. So I didn't miss out on lemurs, but I've seen lemurs before, so I didn't feel too bad about that. Um, the highlights for me is uh, the red panda. I think they only have the one red panda, but uh, it was it was really active. Unlike the Prospect Park Zoo red panda that I saw, it was just like it was sleeping the whole time. I did see it like lift its head up to yawn for a second, but that is nothing compared to the pan red panda here at in omaha there in omaha um i'm not in omaha anymore um it was like running over running all around and maybe it was a bad thing that I was doing that that it was like an unhappy red panda but it was definitely a lot more interesting to watch it was running around it was climbing up the trees um all that stuff that was really cool and i got some i think i took the most pictures of that and then um, I also took a ton of pictures of this tree shrew. They had three separate exhibits of th tree shrews. I guess they don't get along with each other or something because there's only one tree shrew in each of the, the exhibits. But um, the first one that I saw, it uh, it was running around all over the place. And I saw like shaking and scratching um, at the top of the tree thing. And then it was like kept like jumping across between things. So I was trying to get an action shot of it jumping. Um, I didn't quite get that. They were all very blurry because it's kind of dark in there. And I didn't realize, oh, I should up my ISO so I can get better, better speed here. But um, shutter speed. But yeah, I took a, a ton of that. I didn't realize this entire time that I was shooting JPEG and RAW. And uh, it got my memory. I only had the one SD card and it got filled up quick. So I kept having to take breaks, like stopping, like in the middle of like a whole section of the zoo and just be going through my pictures like, OK, these are duplicates, duplicates, duplicates. Uh, it's garbage, 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 duplicates, garbage. Delete all these. And I freed up like 50 more shots that I can take of the next thing. And uh, so there are a few animals I didn't get pictures of um because of that whole issue and then there were a couple that i would really like to have seen but uh they were just like asleep hiding or whatever uh one of those was the ocelot um and then another one was the um what well, well i could see it sleeping the ocelot i couldn't see at all because it was like in an upper area which is like kind, kind of weird how they did it it's in like the desert area of the thing the desert whole building thing is really cool, though, because um, it's like a huge biodome sort of thing, like a um, like a geo. Uh, what's the word? <clears throat> like a it's like it's a huge sphere, and then there's like a, a desert mountain in the middle of it, and then there's also like a downstairs with all the nocturnal animals, and then when you're in the middle of it, it goes all. It's like hollow. That mountain is hollow all the way up which is really, really cool. And then there's like all the bats down there, but they're in their own exhibits, like their own in their own enclosures. You don't have bats flying around in your head or anything like that, which is completely different from in the jungle area where they have like a hundred bats, hundreds of bats, maybe, or maybe there's only like 10, 12 bats. I don't know, but it, it seemed like a lot of bats just flying around like where, where you are, like you're in where the bats are flying around. And they'll be, they don't just fly up in the air. Uh, I mean, yes, they are flying in the air, but they also like fly down through the tunnels that you walk through to get from different parts of the jungle area. Um, and apparently they don't do that for most of the day, that they start doing it like exactly at the time that I got there <laughs> to, to see all those exhibits and um, all the animals and stuff that are in there. Uh, now that jungle section, there's like all kinds of like spiders and their little cages and stuff and like frogs and things like that. And like, I didn't really care about any of those at all. And there, there's some monkeys and things. I didn't care about those at all. Um, <clears throat> I did like the, they, there, there was a pygmy hippo 
and a, a couple of those. Those are kind of cool. And there are some otters. I like those. An otter was staring up at me because I was like on the upper walkway. And you could look down at the otters. They're like 10 feet below you. And there's one. I, I was looking at, looking at it. And it was looking up at me. And it's like taking pictures of it. And it just kept staring at me. I'm like, does it like me? This is kind of weird. Um, as it turned out, it did not like me at all because then it started hissing at me. And then another otter comes over and starts looking at me and hissing at me as well. Like, okay, I was just taking some pictures. I don't know what you think was going on here. But um, anyway, those bats, they're flying everywhere, all over the place. They're flying everywhere. And they're like my favorite animal of of that building in that whole jungle thing. But they were freaking me out because they kept flying at me. And this is after I laughed because this one girl – um she's it was a there's a couple and the girl just like freaked out she like shrieked because a bat like flew right near her and i thought it was so funny and then karma bit me with about 10 bat encounters where every single time i flinched i was like oh, god damn it every single time and i tried to videotape that happening but uh when my camera was on i was recording uh, they kind of left me alone and then as soon as i put my phone back in my pocket boom a bat just flies right towards my face or i turn a corner and boom bat flying right towards me and um yeah it was <laughs> um i keep saying that was, I, I, like talking about it, i've said that it's like like awful but it was actually like really cool and like probably the most memorable thing about this whole trip man it was bad it was batty it was it was real batty um what else was there there were some elephants saw those uh giraffes there's a baby giraffe i got some pictures of them that was really cool um there's a uh there's some rhinos i think there are some indian rhinos i think that that's what those were and they are uh, and then there are also the I don't know. If the, I think the rhinos are at least in danger or, or they might be extinct in the wild. And then the other animals that were in there with them, they were kind of like some antelope type things. I don't even know. what they're, And I feel bad about that now. But I know that those are extinct in the wild. That's what the sign definitely did say. And um, <clears throat> but it was so sad because the two Indian rhinos, they were like separated but there's like a gate and they're just like sitting there on both on either side of the gate, like, you know, chatting, talking to each other. Like, God, I wish I wish this gate wasn't here. Could come hang out over here. This like this area right here by this gate isn't so great. But if you're over here, we could really go like sit by that tree or, or stuff like that. Um, they have a lot of elephants. I think there's like eight elephants, maybe. If I had to guess, there are eight um <clears throat> and uh oh my god the penguins of course the penguins there are about a billion penguins i think there's like 150 different like penguins uh d of all different types in uh, living in there uh which is a lot that's a lot to live in that small ish area but uh you seem like swimming around and all that kind of stuff and uh hear all the people complaining about how cold it is in there and it's like, well, that's they have to be here all day and they like it being cold. So deal with it. Stupid human looky loose. Um, <laughs> that was in the aquarium. There's like jellyfish. I got some really cool pictures of the jellyfish in the aquarium section. Um, I didn't really take pictures of other fish. I got a couple of like sharks and stuff. But um, yeah, it, th this is towards the end of the day when my my camera space kept running out. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not. I'm just gonna take a couple of really good pictures, of really cool pictures, and I'm just gonna skip taking pictures of just the, these dumb fish. Just like there's some more fish. They're different colors. Yep, here's some more fish. There are other there are other colors. Yeah, they're cool. Uh, but I also are it already wasted some space. Uh, taking pictures of koi. The koi pond with the with the geese around them. But um yeah, I think that's 
That's all I wanted to say about the zoo. Penguins, check. Otters, check. Uh, there's some alligators. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> meerkats. That's when my, my camera first ran out of space, my, my memory card. Um, and that's in the desert area. Um, they also had some meerkats in a different section. There's like a, a trio of meerkats but they're sleeping. And I thought I was taking a picture of their, like they're curled up, like their hind quarters. But um, on further inspection of the photo, that is actually like the back of the necks from the, they, they were facing towards the, towards the, where people are. Um, and then like tuck their, their heads underneath. So uh, my Instagram post about that was inaccurate. Let's see. Uh, giraffes, elephants, check, check. Red panda, check. Um, shrew, tons and tons of pictures of shrew. The field mice, I love the field, or the harvest mice. They're so, so tiny. They're so tiny in the exhibits they, they have. It's like a, I don't know. It's kind of like a, like an ant farm. They can see them n nestled up against the glass, like in the, um, amongst the, the hay stalks. Um, and then that, that was the last animal that I saw, I think, was the, the harvest mice um before heading out um yeah i recommend it and uh i think they i think they could raise their prices for some stuff just a little bit it's like it's like really um if that's part of the problem if that's part of the 20 million dollar problem you know or charge for parking there you know charge a couple of bucks i don't know uh because parking is free uh tickets adult tickets is only like 19 dollars. i didn't go to any of the movies they had a bunch of movies throughout the day um but uh if that was the only thing that i was doing that day then i probably might have done that but that night i was going to nxt omaha which was an awesome awesome show but also super crazy first of all this whole uh, road trip nxt road trip um, not their road trip, not mine. Uh, Matt Riddle is supposed to be on it, but he has some type of infection. Um, and so he's not cleared to compete currently. Um, so that's one medical condition. Uh, in the in one of the first matches, we had Rand Raul Mendoza versus um, uh, Jackson Riker of Forgotten Sons um and uh Raul Mendoza hurt his I think he hurt his ankle or his knee or something um it looked like he was uh back in action um at the later shows um later in the week so I think it must have been like a minor thing hopefully um <clears throat> I didn't dig too deep into that so that's two two injuries slash medical conditions um and then well first of all uh Shayna Baszler versus Io Shirai for the championship that was an awesome awesome match and I am so happy that I got to see that in person uh there's some other really cool matches too we had um um Adam Cole come out and fight Shane Th like squash Shane Thorne and this is after Shane Thorne squashed this other guy, uh, Denzel, um, uh, what's his last name? This is his first NXT road trip, and it's his birthday on this uh, the, the day of the show. And Shane Thorne just, like, destroys him. But then Adam Cole comes and destroys Shane very, very quickly. So it was kind of like that first guy, the birthday boy, got double squashed. <laughs> because uh, he got squashed by the guy who got squashed so that's like yeah i don't know maybe he would have been able to squash adam cole i don't know it's like a rock rock paper scissors thing uh a cole a denzel cole thorn <clears throat> thing oh what was his last name it was oh i did take notes on this actually um NXT Omaha. So the opening match, Punishment Martinez defeated Kona Reeves. The finest. It was the finest victory by M Martinez. Rachel Evers and Mia Yim teamed up to defeat Aaliyah and Vanessa Bourne. Uh, Jackson Ra Riker versus Raul Mendoza. is no contest because Ra Raul got injured. 
Um, Riddick Moss defeated Eric Bugenhagen. That was a lot of fun. Um, if you've seen some of the clips of Bugenhagen lately, when he gets revived by his music, we got to see a little bit of that. Um, Shane Thorne versus Denzel DeJourne. Um, Denzel got squashed, and then Shane got squashed by Adam. <clears throat> Then we had the intermission, Forgotten Sons. After the intermission, Forgotten Sons defeated the Street Profits. Um, and the uh, Punishment Martinez came out to save them from the attack afterwards be, uh, to even the score since um, uh, Jackson Riker was in on that attack. Uh, then we had Shayna Baszler defeated Io Shirai in an awesome match. Awesome, awesome stuff from Io. Got some great photos of her just in the air, like always in the air. And then the main event was the Velveteen Dream defended, uh, put his championship on the line against Tyler Breeze. I believe this would have been um, Matt Riddle. Uh, I, I think Tyler Breeze came in to uh, cover for Riddle not being able to compete. So that was super awesome to see Tyler Breeze. But the thing about this match, the match was uh, some crazy stuff happened uh that that uh i think i think the referee got super kicked um ha- oh yeah this is how i believe it was supposed to go the referee gets super kicked gets knocked out for a second other referee comes in and um and uh then that referee gets knocked out um and then the first referee makes the count for velveteen dream to win the match so that is how it went down. But when the first referee got hit by the super kick, I guess how he fell or something, uh, he just totally, he, he snapped his ankle. He just totally, it's like the, the, the leg isn't supposed to be shaped the way that it was. And uh, yeah, it was, it was nuts because Drake the other okay the 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 referee who got injured i want to get his name right um because i follow him i I follow a lot of the referees on on twitter now because they 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 all like uh were suggested after uh so tam tam tom caster is a referee who got who hurt his ankle destroyed his ankle um shattered it compound fractured whatever whatever it was don't take what i said as being what the injury is go look it up but tom he 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 legitimately gets injured when he it's not it takes a bump for how the match is supposed to be going and then uh drake comes out and he throws up the x second time that drake has had to throw up the x on this night and um because i think he was the referee for row mendoza Ma- mendoza match um <clears throat> so the match continues then he gets like knocked out of the ring or whatever and tom caster ankles screwed up uh he he comes to and counts out the win he uh, counts the pin finishes the match he's a freaking badass and uh then the the medics come out they, they're taking care of him and all that velveteen dream talks about it is like wow you guys are amazing he, he in, in his way he says all this and like this this is a crazy night look at all this stuff that's happening and he he gives props to to tom and also gives props to tyler breeze i guess the next night uh they teamed up to fight some people i don't know I don't know who, which pe- whichever people that they fought. I don't know. Um. Oh, but man, uh, they're wheeling them out. Uh, I I had floor seats. Okay, so this is the other thing about this is that I was between a bunch of uh guys who are bigger than me, which is impressive for because I am not a small person. I I have some weight, and uh, to be on either side of me much much larger people uh it was kind of uncomfortable the first match is just like we're squeezed in there and like for the like the 45 minutes before the show even started we were all there and i uh looked back in the rows behind us it was like we're third row 
fourth row is completely full, but then fifth row is like two people. Sixth row is one person. Last row is like one person, two people. Uh, so I turned the guy, I've been talking to these guys a little bit um, be, before the show. I was like, you know, I'm going to try and go those seats over there. Um, give you guys some more room. And uh, so between the first and second match, I go into the second to last row and it's perfect for getting pictures of the entrances. I don't have to worry about sitting right next to somebody and I can see the match just fine because there's uh, they, they are pretty strict about everybody sitting down when the, the match is actually happening and which is very nice. It's uh, when it's enforced, that's it makes it it makes it so much better for everybody because you can actually see the match it's great um uh so yeah the seating situation it ended up being pretty good i feel like i got some pretty awesome pictures go to tiw podcasts um on facebook and there's an album of all the photos all the best photo what i thought were the best photos that i took during that show it was so much fun and then afterwards because i was there on the floor and it was at the on the along the aisle um basically i was able to get my picture with tyler breeze real quick um as he uh made his rounds along the railing <clears throat> all around uh so yeah yeah it, it was pretty it was it was crazy but it was awesome and it was yeah i'm I'm really glad that i went to go uh, went went to this show and i nxt live events are the most fun out of all of them um takeover is really fun too but uh you know it has the big show feel to it this has that intimacy that uh that close up upness and that kind of thing it has it, it has a whole different vibe and i dig it so so much i keep saying i dig stuff this week i don't know um so where are we at on things that are going on um <clears throat> yeah so that was the last show but um i had checked out my hotel went to the zoo went to the show and then i was then i went straight from the show to the other alamo draft house in omaha uh this this draft house i think had seven screens so is uh about the same size as the one here in denver and um very nice i i enjoyed the theater a lot um i noticed that they both had both of these places they the, the servers had tablets um which i th- feel like is kind of weird for that um but then again i didn't notice during the actual shows well during Mag- mary magdalene i was like one of three people in there but um during avengers i didn't notice like the screens of the servers or anything like that so it was fine um i saw avengers endgame uh at 11 o'clock at night after being doing stuff all day and um it was i don't regret it one bit because the movie is awesome I loved it and I'm going to see it again in about nine hours here on Monday morning um, at the Alamo Draft House in in Denver. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to that's all I'm going to say about it. I loved it and uh, everybody should go see it. I think everybody has already gone to see it because it friggin doubled the worldwide box office record for opening weekend. Like, holy crap um 640 million was opening for infinity wars worldwide opening weekend um something like that 1.2 billion dollars for this opening weekend for endgame that is insane that's it's almost double it's almost double the how like what it's crazy and um i actually sold my i had some disney stock and i sold it because it, it got up pretty high i mean going from 118 to 140 in just like two weeks that's like a huge increase and i thought like it's not gonna go up that much and and, and now i'm feeling like 
that may have been a mistake because it's it it could go up a whole lot more with how crazy successful this is. And the thing about the Disney stock, I don't know why it ha- it it's been stagnant for so many years, and apparently it's because the the perception that ESPN is a failure is failing or something how how could that how could that account for it because everything else about disney is this freaking juggernaut of success i don't understand how it's taken this long for them to announce it didn't change the jump didn't happen that breakthrough from beyond uh like that 117 118 stock price didn't happen until this announcement about Disney Plus, a thing that doesn't happen until November. It doesn't launch until November. And that caused a jump now in, in April. Um, I don't know how I don't know how Infinity War Infinity War didn't cause that. I don't know how the Star Wars successes haven't caused that to happen. And uh now I think it's finally like, oh, we, we sh- nobody should care at all about the espn aspect of it now that they own uh, all this fox stuff now too i guess that that was also a big part of the disney plus at, at the same time as the D- disney plus thing is that they have the fox catalog of all the kinds of great stuff but um man like endgame this is i i can i kind of i may have messed up there i messed up may have messed up i mean it still made uh it's still sold for for more than i bought so it's, a, it's still a good deal but it could have held for for, for even for, held out for even more um <clears throat> so is now a good time to buy disney stock i'd say probably not because it's going to be like it's going to be through the roof now but then again maybe it's just going to keep climbing and climbing i don't know it's it, it's it's really impossible to know so uh you know do, do, do your do your research this is not a stock tips show or anything but it is absolutely re- relevant for the most successful film most financially successful film on opening weekend ever and it's absolutely going to break avatar's records i am sure because it's not just an opening weekend hype type of movie this movie is really freaking good I'm going to go see it at least twice more in the theaters. Uh, I mean, uh, like I said, I'm seeing it again in nine hours and I got to see it again on IMAX. Cause I haven't, I have to, I haven't seen it on IMAX yet. So I have to see it on IMAX screen while I can. Um, so, and I, I people are going to go, keep going to see this movie. I'm going to keep going to see this movie. If I have the chance to, I'm going to see this movie again because it's so freaking good. So yeah, that's, that's all. Uh, and then tonight, all the tweets about Game of Thrones, uh, they're full of words and names that I don't know what any of it is. And, um, and it's kind of frustrating. I don't know. But, uh, like, it seems like it's something like, oh, all these spoilers. But it's like so many words and names that I had no idea what they are that there's no way I'm going to remember that. Like when I eventually do watch from the beginning, like um, by the time I get to the, to the episodes that I'm seeing the tweets about now, I'd be like, Oh, cool. I don't remember any of those tweets at all. So this is totally fine. Um, Go see, go see end game. It's, it's great. It's great. It's so good. It's good. So good. Um, all right, that um, I think that does it for this tr- this mega episode about everything this week. My throat is act- is starting to hurt. It started to hurt like an hour ago. But um, let me know what you thought about all this stuff by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, um, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. And um, I'll be back real soon. Uh, The next thing is going to be, well, I'm planning on seeing, well, like I said, Endgame, but I'm also planning on seeing um, uh, High Life. 
starring uh robert pattinson it's like that space it's in space doing stuff in space people exiled to space they're they're being experimented on in space looks pretty interesting i'm planning on seeing that tomorrow uh monday night raw is smackdown all that this week um and i'm also gonna see kevin james at comedy works he's doing a comedy club he doesn't very do that very often anymore i don't know how often exactly but i'm really excited for it it seems like a, a really cool thing uh opportunity to see him do some stand-up so um i'll be talking about all of that real real soon um at some point i'll do a full on um uh, avengers endgame episode um so uh stay tuned for that uh that's it thanks for listening and i'll see you back here for more tiw podcast real real soon stay safe out there super friends bye